Hello folks. I am documenting an organ. Not just any organ, but an organ like the Stradivarius, like the Les Paul, like the Marshall, like the Rolls Royce. This, my friends, is the Wurlitzer 4410 electrostatic reed organ built in 1956. This particular model, being a 4410, has a sustain circuit, which you see here. Not quite sure how it works, to be honest. I don't know if it's a scanner or what. Let's see. Probably not enough light here. I'm not quite sure. I know that uh, Nathan, if you uh, look at 4602, Wurlitzer 4602. Uh, Nathan describes this system here, I believe, I don't know, I think he does actually, on his 4602, which is essentially a console version of this spinet organ. This organ is a spinet. This is a Wurlitzer spinet. The 44, model 44, looks like this. Add the sustain and it becomes a 4410. And attack. Yes, attack. That's very important. I don't know if the 44 has attack on it or not. I believe it does because this is a free read. Whereas a keyed read, well, let's explain free read. Free read means that the reeds are always blowing. When you press a key, it makes the electrical contact of a reed that is already in motion, already producing the tone. It's a free read. It has an instant attack because of this. Now, I do believe that the attack tab might passively somehow make it uh, delay somehow in its attack so that it acts more like the onset of a pipe organ as opposed to a Hammond organ. The Hammond organ had, has an instant attack and Hammond seemed to be taking a lot of business away from Wurlitzer because of the popularity of an organ that has a snappy attack for playing popular standards, etc., popular music of the day. The Hammond had the instantaneous attack. Whereas an organ like this, which was a keyed reed, the Wurlitzer keyed reed, where when you press the key, air blows across the reed much the way an accordion works or the way a pipe organ works when you press the key the air blows across the uh, I'm, I'm pretty much ignorant about pipe organs what does it blow across I forget at any rate reed I don't know no I forget what it's called at any rate this here is the uh, keyed reed and uh, I cable tied the key to this so I wouldn't lose it. I have both keys as a matter of fact. Looking for a good home for this organ. This is an excellent organ for uh, playing hymns, playing a classical organ 
it's not an AGO standard pedal board however it sounds incredibly smooth rich and pipe like especially if you put some reverb on it here's my Rialto here's my Elegant and here is my Worldster 4300 I've got the 4500 at home this is my favorite organ 4300 and the 4500 are my favorite organs they're so real sounding not real like pipes but realistic in their in their effectiveness to play it's so hard to explain music um, there are characteristics of sound when you play music especially the instrument itself has characteristics of, of the sound of the dynamics of the attack, the decay the mixing of the notes and how they interact and no digital representation of a musical sound can very accurately or very naturally blend the way that analog sounds can and the interesting part is worlds are used a real pipe organ when they designed this organ the 4300 and the 4500 and uh, in probably the early 60s they began uh, they were probably prompted by uh, Gall Branson's Rialto success and Kahn um, Kahn had an excellent theater organ and those two companies really inspired Worldser to get in gear and I'm still a little bit uh, I don't know, baffled as to the transition from the pipe factory to the electronic organs I know that Farney Worldser was very involved in the pipes you know but was he involved in the electronic part? I don't know. Uh, I get a little bit um, confused about this. I know that they got the uh, the read system from Everett, and uh, it was such a success, or they foresaw such a success with it that they went ahead and bought the patent from Everett and um, not long after created the keyed read system um, because free reads um, are the way to go if you want the instant attack so um, unfortunately in Columbus, the electric's out. 200,000 homes, so I can't play any of these. But uh, suffice to say, if you ever come across an electrostatic reed organ, don't tear it apart for the tube amp. Yes, it's a beautiful tube amp. It sure is. Great amp for hi fi, great amp for guitar. A better amp or the organ. You might not like organ today. You might never like organ, but it's only because you're not giving it a chance. If you gave it a chance, you would soon realize how incredible of an instrument it is. Throw away all the stereotypes you've ever heard. Listen to organ music for two weeks. Go to uh, YouTube and look at well click on my name on the screen here 
PaulJ0557. Go to my channel. I've got tons of organ music playlists. Just let them play in the background for two weeks and you will definitely keep your organ the next time you find a 44 series. You're not going to tear it apart with this amp. You're going to respect it more and you're going to keep it. You better. <laughs> I'm actually buying this exact amp from somebody up north in northern Ohio. I wrote them a letter and I said, hey, you know, keep that organ no matter what. Don't throw it in the dump. Uh, the next day I wrote them another letter. Well, if you do happen to not find a taker for the organ, because they were giving it away, I would like to have the amplifier from it. Well, within moments after he read it, he wrote me back. Uh, I've already removed the amp and I'll be sending it to you. What's your address? Uh, I would like $25 for shipping. And I didn't know whether to be upset or feel good because I got a deal. I felt more upset. I felt more upset because these organs do not need to be going to the dump. If a Les Paul from 58 or from a guitar from 1956 can be worth thousands and why can't an organ from 1956 be kept from a landfill organ can be played on any kind of music it's not just grandma music whatever that is it's not just hymns and uh, surprisingly I like all organ music now because I've explored it all. I'm not the biggest classical organ fan, but I can respect it. But if you're by yourself and you're playing a musical instrument, you will never be more fulfilled than to sit down at an electronic organ and play. People join clubs, this, that, and the other, go to the gym, this, that, and the other joined Overeaters Anonymous and all you need is a good hobby. Play the organ and you'll be happy. So, over and out. I hate to waste 13 minutes of your time but the electric is off and there's not much to do. Let's look at the bottom of this amp. Ah, look at all those Mallory capacitors. Isn't that amazing? And I think they're stock. I don't think they're replacements. This 4410 works 100%. Absolutely nothing is wrong with it. Nothing at all. It sounds like the day it was made. And after a time for about a half hour, it's even more amazing. So many overtones, so much warmth. You can get a guitar any day of the week. I mean, you can get a guitar amp any day of the week. Right? You can get a guitar amp. You can build a guitar amp. You can get a kit. You can go... There's so much available for guitar players. Why would you need to destroy an incredible organ just to get a little amplifier? And then brag about it online saying, hey, I, I scored this amp from this organ. Well, you dumbass. You ruined a good organ just to build a guitar amp. You know, think about it. It's a hell of a nice looking piece of furniture, my God. You know, I clean furniture, I clean carpet and furniture for a living. And I go into homes every day, and people have such little taste, you know. They would throw something like this away thinking that it's old and ugly. Are you, you're crazy.
This is amazing. Look at the lines on this. This is an amazing look. The legs are here. I took the legs off. I'll put the legs back on. I took them off so I could move it. But uh, this has a really 1950s look about it. That's a really cool look. Just the way the edges are rounded. I really like that. I like how this has this level here. Everything's super high quality with Wurlitzer. It's all hardwood and fine veneer. Wurlitzer is not junk. This organ right here from 1965 is also amazing. It's also hardwood with quality veneer. And uh, good styling too, man. Really nice. It could fit any decor. Okay. This is uh, Scandinavian oiled walnut. And uh, it's just too damn good to end up in a landfill. You know. And this organ sounds amazing. This was the first transistor organ the world to built. They did use a pipe organ, a, a real world or pipe organ to model it. And the thing is, it doesn't sound like a con or a Rialto in that it sounds exactly like a pipe organ. What sounds exact, and I swear, what sounds really exact are the tibias. The tibia sounds like a wooden tibia, tibia clausa. It sounds like it's straight out of the 1930s. Nothing like it. Now, I haven't gotten this 4300 going, but my 4500, which is the exact same organ, has that sound. And a lot of it has to do with the spectre tone. Everything has crossovers in this amp. So all the small speakers, they're not wimpy speakers, they have exact frequencies they play and they're crossed over. So there are two 12 inch in this, there are two 6 by 9s and there are two 4 inch that rotate which is on the spectre tone. There's also, and you can't see it unfortunately, but there's an offset disc that spins in conjunction with the spectre tone and a light beam breaks the edge of the offset disc so that it raises and lowers the volume of the low speakers in conjunction with the rotating high speakers so that it, it has a complete full range theater terminal sound and with with the um, with the tibia uh, four foot, two foot, especially four foot and two foot through the spectra tone. And you play, it sounds like a great Jesse Crawford wooden theater organ sound. And it's using transistors to do it. And uh, there are two organ players, two types of organ players that I feel a little bit sorry for. Those are the hardcore classical players who refuse to branch out and to try other types of playing. And the hardcore theater or classical pipe organist who refuse to embrace electronic organ. Uh, somehow, some of those players, they've skipped over the electronic sound and jumped straight to the hopped work, which is essentially a replica of the real pipe sound. Well, the thing is, there's something very special about the electronic organ sound. It never was trying to sound like pipes. They came really close with Kahn and really close with Galbranson and really close with Allen. I like the fact that Wurlitzer came really close, and I don't even think they tried to. Well, they did. They tried more than anybody, apparently. But 
there are remnants of Wurlitzer electronic organ sounds that they left there. They weren't trying their asses off to make it an electronic, real pipe organ sound. Because they knew there was validity in electronic organ sounds. And that's what I wish I could drive home to everybody. The electronic organ is a musical instrument and it needs to be preserved, it needs to be played, it needs to be explored, it needs to be developed musically from where it's at. I could play old classics all day long, but why not create more music with the electronic organ? It's never been a compromise, it's its own instrument, and that's the beauty of it. And once you understand that, you'll agree with me and you'll keep looking for those organs and keep them alive. So that's all I've got to say and over and out.